This is my van. And this is my garage. This is big. And this is small. Parking can be challenging. The camera does make it easier, but I still have to be careful not to bump it against the wall. There are plenty of parking stops available online, but why buy something when I can spend days making my own for twice the price? Let's begin with Fusion 360 and try to come up with a solution. I don't want anything complicated, just a simple block that's slightly tilted to better fit the curvature of the tire. I'll draw the tire first, just for reference. Now that we have that, let's design the actual wheel stop. I'll try to loosely imitate what's being sold online. So this piece here should rest against the wheel. Let's continue with the top part and then back down to the ground. I'll tilt the back side just a little. I don't know if that will actually make it more stable, but at least it looks better. Alright, that looks good. Now that the side profile is finished, let's extrude it. I'll use the same width as my tires, which are 23 cm. You can increase that if you want to make it easier to hit the block when parking. It's always a good idea to apply fillet on the sharp edges. It looks much better and it's more comfortable when holding it in hand. If you plan on attaching the stop to the floor, then simply create two holes with the correct diameter and you're all set. I'm renting my garage so I can't drill any holes there. But because I'm parking right up to the wall, I could use something to rest the stop against it and prevent it from moving. Let's design another smaller piece. The back side will be flat so that I can place it against the wall. Finish with the fillet again and we're all done. Now I just have to come up with a way to connect them together. I could just print something, but it might not be strong enough and my printer is too small anyway. Despite all the high tech behind 3D printers, sometimes using a piece of wood is still the best solution. I'm using the cheapest wood you can buy at the hardware store. The dimensions in my case are 25 by 50 mm, but anything more or less similar will do. I'm also creating holes of the same size in the blocks, making sure that they're at the same height on both ends. With that done, let's see if we can save some plastic as well. Most of the force will be concentrated in the upper part, so I won't change anything there. However, the bottom part will barely be affected, so I think I can remove some of it. I'll just cut away a section like this. And then repeat it for the smaller block as well. As for the actual printing, we want our blocks as strong as possible, without wasting too much filament or printing time. Stefan from CNC Kitchen did a series of tests a while ago. According to his results, we can achieve maximum strength when using 6 perimeters, 6 bottom layers and 6 top layers with an infill of 15%. Using those settings really makes a difference. The block feels very solid, almost like mellow. I'm sure this will do the job just fine. And finally, we need to cut the wood to the correct length. Everything seems to fit together nicely. Now let's put it in place and see if it actually works. And there we go. Perfect. 